This is a Tandon 386 SXPC with a hard drive of 40 megabytes and 5 megabytes of RAM, and it has been stored and unused for almost 20 years. This is a very special computer for me, and it's because this was my first computer ever. It was purchased by my dad in 1990, and it was meant to be used as a workstation for running mainly AutoCAD, so it had to be very, very powerful, and indeed it was. 16 kHz processor plus a MAT co-processor, 40 MB hard drive and 5 MB of RAM, that was something insane on that date. This machine was a beast and represented a huge investment for my family at that time. But this computer also was the source of money for my childhood household for years as it allowed my dad to work. For me represented the tool that made me discover my passion for computers write my first lines of code, and somehow it made me who I am today. For these reasons, I have a special feeling for this machine, and I always refuse to get rid of it. Obviously, at some point in time it became obsolete, and it was replaced with a newer machine. At that point we still used sometimes at home until it became forgotten in storage until today. In this video series, I'm going to restore this machine as much as I can, hopefully bringing it into life and rediscovering its abilities. It's resurrecting my childhood 386. This machine came originally with a 524 inches floppy drive, but it was replaced shortly after. I still keep that drive in working conditions, but it is installed in a more modern computer. The CPU has been stored in very good conditions, so I don't expect damage inside. However, I will need to take a look inside and perform a good cleaning. The first thing that comes into my attention is that the batteries got somehow loose into the case, and also they have leaked into the motherboard. This is really bad. So I'm going to remove them immediately. Here you can see the corrosion. I hope it's not too bad and it can still work fine. The power supply also looks nasty and might have been affected too, so I will have to be careful when turning it on. Other than this, the machine looks good. A little dusty, but in good conditions. Here you can see the 3 hcs processor and the MATCO processor installed. Here you have the detailed view of the seams of RAM and the graphics card. Next, I'm going to perform some cleaning inside and unassemble the main parts. The hard drive is hidden underneath the floppy drive, which is mounted in this kind of tray. It is a peculiar setup with multiple screws. And here it is, Western Digital 40 megabytes. Hard to believe how much stuff was able to put in it.
As you can see, there is a third card installed that I'm not sure what it is. It seems to add two extra serial ports, but I don't remember ever connecting anything here. Graphics card was a Headland SBGA with 512 kilobytes of RAM, another expensive component for that times when most computers were using monochrome screens. 1989. And these are the four SIMs of 1 megabyte each, which, in addition of the 1 megabyte in the motherboard, gave a total of 5 megabytes of RAM, a quite unusual amount. Next, I decided that I'm going to try if the power supply is dead or works. Because of the battery's damage, I don't want to compromise any component inside, so in case it blows up, I will disconnect everything in the motherboard. And well, it seems that it works. No strange noise or anything. I will leave on for a few minutes to see if it gets too hot. Meanwhile, I want to test the hard drive separately to see if it's also in working conditions. These old drives can be damaged easily. Okay, time to try. If everything is fine, the USB adapter should detect it and the partition should appear in my screen. But nothing happens. Also, I can hear some strange noises coming from the drive. There is definitely something wrong here. At this point I fear the hard drive might be not working, but before I'm going to try something else. If you want to see if it finally works, don't miss the next episode. <laughs>